I am so excited for you to watch our next act. And I hope you're sitting somewhere where you're comfortable and you're holding something that's not going to spill because you are going to be laughing really hard because next up is a wonderful supporter of our Feed a Family campaign. He helped us kick off our Flashback to Hunger event a week ago. And you know him well. He's Stephen Donovan, and he's a morning radio show host for Light 105 in Providence, and he's been entertaining people in one form or another for the better part of the last 15 years. His stand-up career has taken him to the biggest and best clubs in the country. He's a three-time Emmy-nominated television host. His morning show and radio station are currently rated number one in the market. I want you to welcome Stephen Donovan. He is amazing. Take it away, Stephen. Thank you. Uh, Stephen Donovan is the name. I haven't heard of me either. Uh, we are here to raise money for uh, the children and the elderly and the uh, people in between. We're not playing favorites. And uh, beforehand, before I came out of uh, the curtain, they said, uh, we're going to feed people uh, with your help. Uh, I'm not feeding anybody today. I haven't even had lunch yet. But that's not important. Uh, and they said, don't swear. Don't swear. No cursing. No F words. No words with F in them. So uh, there will be no falafel jokes, nothing about France or Farfik Nugan. Uh, I don't know what you have uh, wrong with the letter F. It's a, it's a fine uh, word, uh, but uh, apparently that's bad. I don't know if uh, you have ever heard swears before, and they don't want me to tell you. So if maybe there's Amish people listening. Uh, aloha. Uh, thank you. If you have sandwiches, just put them in a bucket and mail them down here to the TV station, and we'll give them to people. Uh, passing by. Uh, my name is Stephen Dunham, I've said that before, and I need some kind of a telethon. I need help. I'm not living my life uh, right. I just moved in uh, to a home. I own a home uh, with my girlfriend. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, there's 75,000 people here, one clapped, and that's <laughs> the appropriate number because it's a terrible mistake. Uh, remember how bad the winter was last Winter was terrible. It was snowing all the time. I rented an apartment last winter, and I watched my landlord shovel a heartbreaking amount of snow. It was, it was so bad, I had to stop my naps and PlayStation just to open the window and say, could you snow blow a little quieter? Because the guilt is making me all, all terrible. And now uh, I own uh, my own home. And so if anything is wrong, if anything needs shoveling or fixing or painting, or pulling or scratching, I have to do it. And it's, uh, I don't know how to do anything. Uh, so I'm not looking forward uh, to this winter. It's my girlfriend's fault. Come on in. <laughs> We're having a, that was just Jerry Lewis. That's the surprise, uh, and I apologize to you. Jerry Lewis is here, but he has terrible short-term memory, and they didn't tell him the right time, so he just bursts on in. I have my pants on, and pow. That's why, if you ever see Jerry Lewis, most of the time he has no pants on, because he only puts on pants for show business. So don't, this isn't going well. Well, fine. Jerry Lewis is coming up next. And I think James Brown. I don't know. I heard he died. That might not be true because there's a James Brown fella in the hallway, and he's the hardest working man in that hallway uh, for you and the baby Jesus. So uh, my girlfriend is the reason why I'm, she tricked me. She said, Stephen, we've tongue kissed three times. We have to move in together. It's in the Bible. And uh, I'm Roman Catholic. I've never read the Bible. So I said, fine. All right. I don't want to be in trouble with the Lord. And uh, now she, she tricked me. And uh, now, you know, I'm not Tiger Woods, so this is, I'm a one woman man, you know. And so uh, I have to keep her happy or the drawbridge goes up. You know what I mean? There's no storming the castle. So she says, we have to talk, uh, we need uh, vegetables. And I said, oh, okay. Uh, no, we need to grow vegetables. We own a little piece of America, Rhode Island, a little tiny piece, and we need to have life come up from the dirt, and then we'll grab it, and we'll eat it, and we'll celebrate. We live across the street from Stop and Shop. 
<laughs> his vegetables from Peru, from magical lands I've never heard of. For a nickel, we can cross the street and eat every day. But no, we have to wait four months for the one cucumber to arise and hunt it and grab it. Hooray! Uh, but again, she's the boss. Forget Tony Danza. She's the boss. Uh, old people tell the young people why that joke's funny. And then, uh, OK, that's the, that's the word for her. OK, OK. Uh, so we, we uh, plant uh, the dirt. We plant the seed in the dirt, and there's a dance. Uh, a hoe uh, is an actual tool. For, don't be nervous. Um, so yeah, um, things are happening, and they're growing, and it's getting exciting because as soon as the produce comes in, then my ship comes in. You know, um, yeah, OK. So uh, we have a problem, and uh, it's dramatic problem. Uh, bunny rabbits. Yeah. Apparently, uh, bunny rabbits uh, love to eat vegetables. <laughs> and they can't go to the stop and shop. So right here is the free fixin's bar uh, ready for Peter Cottontail and his whole freeloading family to come in and eat what I've worked hard. Uh, so she says to me, uh, you, need to, you need to solve this problem. You're the landlord. And uh, it's go time. And so I don't know what experience you have with uh, bunny rabbit uh, hunting, but they're quick. They're very quick, and they're racist, and they're angry, and they're terrible. They're terrible animals of Satan, and they run quick, and, they're, and they mock, and they run, and they wiggle, and, and they poop little things at you when you try to catch them, and you cannot catch them. And I'm running all around. Now, maybe you live with a man or a woman, and there's a problem. Don't say, you know what you should do. <laughs> I knew what I should do, lovely. I would be doing that right now, and we'd have a salad, and it would be great. But that's inside. That's inside. That's not coming out of my face. That's, so she only hears, what should I do? <laughs> Fox urine. <laughs> that's what she should do. Uh, I've already uh, demonstrated a lack of ability to catch a wildlife, tiny bunny rabbits. I can't do that. Why would you think I know how to hunt a predator <laughs> like a fox and capture him and take him into the woods, some keg party, and wait till he's had so much to drink, he has to pee and then collect it and then sprinkle it? How would you? <laughs> they sell fox urine, OK? They sell it. Oh, OK. Um, they sell. Uh, this raises a whole cornucopia of questions. Uh, how do you know it's fox urine? <laughs> is there a taste test? Is there, how do you know it's not Barry, who just got out of prison, in the back with a bunch of jugs? He's like, yeah, slap an extra pulp label on it. We'll charge double. We'll be fine. How do you know? How dumb do you have to be as a high school fella where you're, you take the test to assess you know, your future, and you take the test, and then the guy says, OK, have a seat. Um, Bill, uh, you're so dumb. Um, the best job you can hope for, the best hope you have of earning any money of any kind is to roam uh, the, the streets and then grab whatever animal you can find and squeeze it. And whatever comes out, sell it. That's the best. You have no job skills of any kind. <laughs> Like, you know the guy in the club whose only job it is to turn on the faucet after you've peed and you're going to wash your hands? That's his job for eight hours every day, his job. Would you like a lightsaber? That's, like, you're dumb. You're too dumb for that job. You can't handle that. So just animal excrement, find it and sell it. Go get them. But uh, she's the boss. So I have to get a box of uh, urine which I did, and I put it on my vegetables. Do you know how they came out? <laughs> Salty. <laughs> yeah, so that's, uh, that's my girlfriend. That's uh, how, how you, uh, you learn a lot about uh, women when you live with them. Uh, she uh, likes antiques. Uh, I hate antiques. 
Antiques are crap people have been trying to throw away for <laughs> hundreds of years. No one has wanted this crap since the revolution and now it's in my house. The pie safe is the item in question. The pie safe, Paul Revere and his brother Butchie found some driftwood and a hinge and we're gonna keep the pie safe. Oh, the red coats are coming. Let's put the pie in here. Wow, we're safe. There's no lock on the GD thing. You can open it anytime you want and take the pies. But apparently that's why we won the revolution. They didn't know how to do this. Where they didn't know how where are the pies. <laughs> there are two pie safes in my home tonight. Which begs the question, how many pies have you enjoyed since you moved in with Lovely Face? Zero. Zero pies. But we have furniture dedicated to pies. But screw it. If, Al, if, if ISIS comes for the Entenmann's parties at my house, because we can keep them all safe. <laughs> safe and sound. Thank you for your time. Please donate as much as you can. Uh, $50 will feed a family of four this Thanksgiving. God bless.